Welcome to Out of Home Insider, the loudest voice in Out of Home. Today's guest is Wes Frick. Wes is an out of home artist who leads advertisers from being total noobs to the format to looking like they've got a world class team who's been at it for years. Getting a start locally with Lamar in Lubbock, Texas, Wes knows what it means to be boots on the ground, wearing multiple hats during that time that have helped refine his approach as an artist. With a passion for using out of home for good, Wes comes out of the gates firing with the economics of why most creative sucks and how we can use the medium to create more bottom line impact for humanity at large. And in a time where we're seemingly all consumed by data, data for targeting, data for measurement, the importance of great creative is more paramount than ever before. If you want help pulling off your next campaign or connecting with more great folks like Wes, visit onescreen.ai. Without further ado, let's go. Welcome everybody to the Out of Home Insider Show, a podcast like no other, hosted by the one and only Tim Rowe. Get ready to have some knowledge dropped on you and to be entertained because nothing's more valuable than food for your brain. So sit back, relax, we're about to dive in as the best industry podcast is about to begin. Wes, like, what did you just say about every billboard in the 50s was what? They were good. Okay, Why? So every billboard in the 50s was really good because they spent a month on the artwork and they really spent time like planning it out. They almost all had extensions and they, they were like very, like they all have their look and feel to them. I mean, if you really go and look back at this stuff, they had multiple extensions. It was all hand painted. They would paint people's faces. Like they had charged, I think they had said $25 a square foot for to paint a face. Like, wow. but those wow. artists were very well respected and they, they made money, but like in this day and age, it's, it's Photoshop. And for some reason, there's a perceived value that even though we're designing like thousands of billboards, the average salary for a billboard artist is from 40 to like 70, which is barely a living wage in this day and age. Like, especially if you live in sure. like Denver, like right, because it, there's no manual, like, because you're not you know, putting on white overalls and, and, you know, and painting all day. Like it's, it's, it's a really important point that you make there. Like the billboards were good because they had time to make them good. People were paid very well to make them good. Right. And, and we've, we've slipped into this, like, because on the internet, everything's easy. So this should be easy. And the value associated with art, with what this is, has been so deeply diminished, but it's the most important part of out of home targeting right. and measurement don't matter if your creative stinks. The, the average, the average expected turnaround time or you're fired in most billboard companies is we need this artwork today to 36 hours. However, that makes most billboards look average and most billboards are average because the artists are underpaid and they're rushed. But if, if you give an artist, like if you give your artist 150 grand and a week to do everything, then they're going to be innovative a lot. And they're going to make it's a damn the, fine point. They're going to make they some will the, be innovative. They're going to make some of the best because they're not worried about their next meal. They're not worried about their kids having a college fund. Like when the, you have 150 grand, you have retirement savings. You have your 401k, you have your um, housing stuff paid for, you have a reliable mode of transportation, the kids are doing good, you're saving, you have emergency savings. At a forty dollars to $60,000 salary, it's like your brain is just like, like, I love to do it. But the reason I started my business is because I can't, I, I would have to have two jobs to live in Denver, you know? Sure, and you're just things. trying to survive. Yeah, so... I would just say if you if you really go back and look at the billboards from like the 50s to the 70s, almost all of them are outstanding, hmm. probably had teams working on them to paint it. Um, they had an original classic feel to it. The messaging was really good on almost all of them. Um, and now like now they're good, but most of them are rust. Most of them are just like, you know, what the typical billboard is. But I mean, they really like they used to draw like sketches. They used to draw sketches of the billboards and then they'd present them. And then once they'd approved, they'd like, I think they put it on a projector and then they trace it and then they go in and paint it. And my thing is like, when you, you know, right now, when you print 36, 14 by 48s, you'll just print it. They used to go and hand paint every single 14 by 48. Every square oh, inch of that. 
Every was all touched by ago. a human and a paintbrush. All of them, right? And so, but there was there was a lot more that was involved in it, which I'm you know I'm I know I know a good amount of it, but there's probably a mountain of things where I mean I there's people that used to paint billboards that could tell you a whole lot more, than, you know, because they actually went and did it. But I mean, there like today's day and age, I just feel like the creative is undervalued in the industry, as you can see from the forty to sixty thousand perceived you know, payment range that an artist is. But if I'm going to be responsible for millions of impressions with tens of millions, like tens of millions of dollars in large markets and millions of dollars in smaller markets, I should probably be paid a wage that I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about what I'm going to eat next or my savings or what if my car breaks, what am I going to do? Because I mean, there's times I had to work two jobs to be a billboard artist I was so uh, yeah. I would tell people, yeah, I make you know fifty thousand designing billboards for all of, like six hundred out of eight hundred, and then I would go and wait tables for the other part of it to make sure I was good. And uh, that I mean, it's just the honest truth, you know. It's, it's not. It, it's it's <laughs> not right. It's it's something that yeah. it's something that as marketing as a profession we've gotten so far away from because of the digital landscape and everything's so easy. Right. And we've got AI and AI makes creative and things like that. Like Mm -hmm. it's become too easy and we haven't put enough emphasis on what makes great creative great and why it's so important. You're tearing up like the whole interwebs. I love all of these mocked up creatives. It kind of reminds me of like garbage pail kids, except yours are really beautiful designs and all original and unique. Um, For folks that don't know West Frick, West Frick design agency. Wes, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to be here with you and speak about stuff again in that out of home space. Yeah. Heck yeah. We connected, uh, I guess not, not all that long ago over, uh, over the old linky din. And uh, you you did something that just so stood out to me with your design of vinyl. You you put these great little touches on there that only the installers see. You create these beautiful designs. And we're going to talk about all of the design work here, but it was your attention to detail and these thoughtful little messages that you include on a piece of vinyl that is only intended for the installer of that billboard. One person in the entire world will ever see that message. So Really appreciate your thoughtful approach and looking forward to the conversation here today. But how'd you get in and out of home? So um, I went, so I went, originally I went to school for graphic design um, at South Plains College. And then I had went to Lubbock Christian and got a bachelor's in it. And then my very first job was actually working at Lamar Advertising of Lubbock. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I competed against some applicants and got the job. And ever since I just kind of was doing it, Um, I fell in love with it, but, um, I started at Lamar in Lubbock, Texas. Now I'm living in Denver, Colorado, and I'm kind of doing my own thing now. Um, but I, yeah, that's how I got into it. Um, is as a designer. Yes. Um, they, they were hiring a graphic artist specifically. Um, so I did that for about like the first year. And then I also, um, was involved with sales. And so I also would help them make one sheets and make proposals. And I've just got, to have the opportunity to like meet with everybody and kind of learn like what the operations does, the real, the real estate people, the salespeople, like, and kind of, you know, a little bit of the office manager billing type of stuff. Um, So, but it's just something that I, I thought it was really cool. So I wanted to like grow in that space. So here I am today kind of doing my own thing. (laughs) Good for you. So you got into it uh, on the design side, got to do some internal marketing collateral. I I think at some point, you, you even spent some time uh, maybe as a chartist or moonlighted, um, you know, a, as a chartist, you got to touch a lot of parts of the business there at Lamar and Lubbock. And, and that certainly evolved into, into you doing your own thing. Um, we, we talked a little bit about the market and you, you had shared just such a astute perspective and, and some things that I really appreciate just from a, like a, a good sound fundamental marketing standpoint. Um, but you, you didn't just like sign up to design billboards. Like you, you're a person that leans all the way in. Like when you do something, you go all the way. So that experience yeah. at Lubbock, like that really shaped kind of the direction of your career, no? Right, yeah. Because, um, yeah, whenever you do a billboard campaign, they're not cheap. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. And like, I think that people at a first glance just think, okay, I'll put my ad up on this space and that's it. But really, like, it's just a completely different 
it's a completely different art form as far as the design goes. And the reasoning why we have billboards is to really solve an awareness issue. And it plays mm -hmm. a key role in the overall marketing system. And there's just a lot to it. Um, but when I, I mean, people are going to spend thousands of dollars on their billboard campaign, possibly tens to hundreds of thousands. So when I'm dealing with a client that is going to put up a risk to go and do this type of stuff, like we really, I, I really need to go in and like, ask them what their goals are, who buys from them, understand where these people are, what they're actually trying to achieve. And then also, I also look over their social and their web because we play a part in the system. Like I, mm. there's, a, there's a difference. I mean, really, because we make it, like billboards make it to where people are aware of a solution or a thing. And once they're aware, then they take action by going to a storefront, as you see, like, you know, Cracker Barrel advertising with directionals everywhere. They specifically want people to go to the storefront. And so they feature the food and then like a classic kind of feel to it. Or you have an awareness one where you have your political buys and they have a message that is controversial or something. And then it gets the people talking, but they sure. talk and take that action online. So, um, being able to kind of go in and like diagnose what their problem is and actually recommend it is good. Um, there's some clients where I say, don't do a billboard yet. When I tell them, no, I don't want to design your billboard yet. It probably is because they don't have a good website or their social media is dead. And I just mm -hmm. think that those things need to be in place before you do a buy, because once you get the audience interested, then they will take action. But when they go to take action, it just has to compel them there so that they can buy. Cause you don't want your audience to bounce back. Like, it's and is that, like, like, is that a common, is, is that a common misstep? Do, do, do folks not think about those things often enough in your experience? I have seen a lot of, I've seen many clients who have done a billboard campaign, but they decide to use their Instagram only, or they're limited to using only their Facebook. And so like people who that don't really what do you what, mean. So like, um, so, and so like they'll put their brand up, but then they can't put their website because they don't have one. So they're mm -hmm. kind of limited to only mm -hmm. using that account as their directional. And so I would kind of rather them have something that can like, Bring it like if you're going to sell like t-shirts, I want them to be able to have a shop, not just an Instagram type of sure. thing where they like email. Or, like I've seen, I've seen people say, well, I don't really have a social or a website, but put my email on the billboard. And it's just like, no, you need to have that in place before you do this. Cause we're talking about like a local game here. Like this isn't, you know, it, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the glitz and the glamor of, you know, the big brands that we see in times square and spectaculars and all these things. At the end of the day, 80% of our industry is bought and sold locally. It's yeah. it's Joe's Pizza, right? It's it's Maria's you know, nail salon. It's 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 small local businesses who in 2022 may still not have a functional website. They may only have a Facebook page or an Instagram account. Like these are real challenges at the local level. And again, 80% of our business is bought and sold locally. So it's easy to get lost in, in, in the big brands, but this is a real challenge at the local level. And, and you're saying that, Hey, before, before doing a billboard, before me designing you a billboard, like there's some basic block and tackle stuff that we want to make sure we've got right. Right. Like basically what I'm trying to kind of say with it is if you're going to do a successful billboard campaign, a lot of people are about to be aware of you and a lot of people are about to be interested in you. So you need to kind of have the things in place to be able to handle that audience. Because if you don't, like you're going to lose out on a bunch of stuff, you know, like if you have a billboard talking about the Grand Circus and they go to the Grand Circus and it's like a tent and a dog or like, it's, you know, something stupid, like they're not going to go, they're going to bounce back and they're going to talk bad about you. Too. Right, right. It could, it, it can, it can come back to bite you the other way. I can, I, I remember yeah. uh, before I, before I started selling billboards at Adams, um, I, I used to spend a lot of time in the market in Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, you know, where I ended up working. And I remember there was a billboard, and it had this beautiful extension. I didn't know what an extension was at the time, uh, but it was a martini glass, and part of the glass and the olive were, you know, obviously coming off the the billboard. You could probably imagine it there. Um, and, and I forget what the copy was, but the copy was the most memorable part. It was this beautiful extension, beautiful creative. And, and the copy was really memorable. This is years ago, probably three, four years ago at this point. 
And I remember having like, there was a special occasion or something. And I, I wanted to find a place to go to eat. That was really nice. And that place, uh, you know, kind of stuck out of my mind because of the billboard. So, Hey, mission accomplished. It got me to remember your ad. Right. And while I, so while, while I, while I have you on there, so yeah. in, in sales and in kind of like relationship building, people don't remember what you said but they remember mm. how you made them feel. That's so right. when they used an extension that entertained you or like, you know, like no one really knows what the cows actually say for Chick-fil-A. People really kind of just know, well, they know eat more chicken, but like some of them are different, but as long mm-hmm. as they have cows and cows painting, that's fun. And that's what brings Right. And you know, company. it's Chick-fil-A. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. And, and thank you for, yeah. thank you for stopping me and point that out. Uh, Cause it was, it, it was exactly that it was fun. And then, you know, and it, and it represented what I kind of envisioned, which was like, a, you know, a nice, a nice place to eat, but wasn't too stuffy. Right. They were willing to have some fun with uh, you know, it was cheeky copy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so I Googled, I Googled the, the copy, I Googled the tagline and nothing showed up. And I was like, that's weird. Like maybe I'm searching it wrong. So then I added mm-hmm. some, some, you know, geo filters to it and there was still nothing. I ended up having to go to the Adams Outdoor LinkedIn and scrolling through all of the posts, hoping to find a picture of the billboard right. um, so that I could figure out who the restaurant was so that I could go there. It was a total miss that 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 restaurant still advertises on billboards. Hopefully they've they've since figured that out. But that's that stood out to me as a marketer. I was like, what a waste. You did everything. You did all of the hardest parts. Yeah. And as a consumer, unless I really wanted to eat there, I wasn't going through all that work to find out what the hell the name of your restaurant was. Like, it's such a miss. And I appreciate that you're willing to stop folks and say, hey, you know what? Slow, slow down a second. Let's think about let's think about this whole thing. Let's think about it holistically. So let's say, OK, they've got a website. They 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 pass the sniff test like this is a real business. We can we can drive traffic. We can put them out into the world. What are like the top three things that people get wrong when, when they, when they start to think about designing a billboard, what do you have to talk people off the ledge from? I think, so I would say the first thing is don't make the message for the business, make the message for the business's customer, because they're the ones that are going to see it and have that need. One thing that I see with the businesses, is they'll try to like put their brand and what they do out there and that's okay, but they just kind of need to answer why you, like why that plumber, because you'll see very professional looking billboards for banks and stuff that look really nice, but they just don't grab you or like say something. But then you see another one that's like for, you know, free invoicing, or they'll give you like 2% cash back on your debit card and people who are, you know, they show some sort of benefit to get people in. Um, the second thing, um, okay. Yeah. So the first thing is design for the, um, businesses, customers, not the business. The second thing would be, you just got to keep it simple. It's challenging to be simple. Um, this, this medium, it is mandatory to be simple and it's not optional because Mm. you have to do it simply to really kind of get people. Most people don't look. So if you give them something that kind of iconic, they will. And so it's just kind of being able to understand who they are as a brand and presenting anything that's as least simple and eye-catching to them. But you have to have a consultation and break that down. Um, simplicity, color contrast, um, typography, legibility, brevity, all that. Like it mm. has to be done that way because we are a medium that if you aren't demanding attention, then it doesn't work. It, it, out of home doesn't work if it's not simple. And sometimes, I don't know, sometimes there is a super busy message, but it's making fun of it being busy instead of simple. Like Chipotle had one that had like 25 words on it, but they knew. Oh yeah. And just a few of them are like bolded out or whatever. Yeah. The yeah. ingredients they, one, maybe the ingredients one. Yeah. That, that's why yeah. that one's busy, but, but they knew what they were doing and it worked. Um, yeah. So, okay. Simpleness. Um, yeah. Simple. Make the message for the customer. Simple is hard, but required. It, 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 yeah. And then all of like the design elements, the contrast, the colors, the typography, um, I, I, I think, and, and it's, you know, it's easy, it's easy to put into an outline and it's easy to, to recognize when you see it, but it's really, really hard to do well, consistently all the time for all sorts of different clients across different industries and verticals with different brands and messages. It's not an easy thing to do. By any means. Yeah. 
The third, the third thing about design is consider location because if they're going to do 20, like my thing is, if you're going to do a buy with me and you want me to design your 25 billboard campaign, you need to have the artwork customized to every location because if you have your billboard close to the road, great, you can mm-hmm. read it. But if you if there's a chance that you have a board that's like not very good, it's a really kind of far read, you may have to switch that up to be something mm. different. Because if you blanket a message across those 25, it'll be okay. But like if it's custom to every single one, then that's kind of the kicker because the location matters. I mean, if you if you are a green landscaper and your billboard is right by trees, you need to change it a little bit or else you're going to blend into the environment. And so um, stuff, stuff like that. That makes a ton of sense. I, I don't know where you're at. How do you, how do you, for, for an advertiser, you know, that some of that might sound hard or like a lot of work to, to, to go through all these things. These are things that you as a, as a billboard designer, as an, as an out of home designer and someone who understands how it's bought and sold, where placements are relative, you, you really offer kind of a unique uh, strategic advantage in that you, you can paint that whole picture no pun intended or maybe yeah. maybe pun intended <laughs> yeah. um but does does that ever scare folks off with with the hey you should be considering a design for each of these or how do you how do you manage that expectation maybe for somebody that hasn't done out of home before um i think i think it's it's important to start from a really good fundamental foundation and everything that you're describing i couldn't agree with more for somebody that's maybe not convinced, can you just talk through like what that process looks like? Does it actually take more time? Does it does it impact the client at all? Um, you know, to um, work with somebody like yourself and, and consider all those things. It, so, like, they don't necessarily need to do twenty five different ideas. They just have twenty five different locations. So, with that being said, they probably have three to five different ideas that they're going to mm-hmm. use across those twenty five. So, it's really not too much. But like what I do, and this is, you know, it's what I do because I have placed multiple buys for local and national and I've just kind of seen. So there is one I had done in particular, they had like a hundred. And what I did is they had 15 sizes and they had um, left and right hand reads. And what I did is I made a left and right hand read version of every artwork for them. So like if there was a 14 by 48 right hand read, it had this creative if it had a 14 by 48 left hand read, it had this mm. creative and maybe, I'm, but so like the image grabs your attention, right? So if you're on a left hand read, you need your image on the right because that's kind of kind of pull people over. But then if it's on the right, then it would be on the left type of deal um, with that. So basically I don't tell them, I don't tell them a lot of that because I would just rather tell the client, I'll get it done for you mm-hmm. because like, I don't want them to think like a million I have things. To do all these things. Like, sure. My life is hard. I know the complexities of doing a big campaign like that. All I want them to know is I've got you back. Like, I don't need, I don't need to explain every single detail. I just need them to say, yes, I'll take care of it. But what I'm going to do is, I mean, if the late, the last big campaign I did, I created like 15 ideas for them, but I also sent the mock-ups, but those ideas are like, okay, I love these, these three or five. And then it's like, okay, send me all the photos the company sent you. And it's like all of these photos, if they don't have it, then it's, if they don't have the photos, which sometimes they don't, that's okay. But I always give it a mock-up because like, when you look at the flat file, just like head on, you're not able to really kind of get it, but right. seeing it on an approaching close up both makes a tremendous difference in them saying like, if, if, cause my thing is like when people try to get really busy with their billboard and they just don't understand it. Um, and they're not really listening to me about it's got to be simple. I'll put it on an approach shot and put it really small. Mm. And if they can't see it, then they kind of say, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But you, you have to kind of do that. So, but anyway, the, the best way to answer that question is um, I, just, I don't explain all of that. I just kind of do it. And then once it's done, they kind of grasp it. And we just kind of work it that way. That's the magic. That's what's happening behind the scenes. No, it's, I think yeah. it's important. It's important for us as an audience to know how to be thinking about it so that we can appropriately, you know, advise advertising. I appreciate you going through that. You, you, you touched on for a second there, the importance of knowing the location for the creative. You shared such a fun story the first time that we talked. I'd love to, to love to maybe retell that story. Um, it was, it was about how so many folks follow, uh, you know, want to advertise in Dallas and you brought up this great you know story about this one road through this rural part of the state 
And if you're trying to reach this audience, this is the road to be on. Can you, can you recreate that, that journey? When you talk about location, it just made me think it of pride? it was, it was, it was about, it was about, you know, brands wanting to buy like downtown Dallas, but that there's this stretch of, of road out of oh, Dallas yeah. where you know, like super high income, they're going to the lake, um, that kind of story where, where, cause we, we get that a lot, right? Like, we're we're drawn to these top markets for for all the reasons that we should be when the reality is we're trying to reach an audience audiences right. demonstrate behaviors those behaviors are reflected in the real world via movement and that understand how an audience behaves and moves can actually unlock discovering underpriced and undervalued opportunities and that was the story that that you shared uh, about Dallas i'm hoping that that you could maybe retell or reshare that okay um, so if you want to target an area, like when, when you do a billboard campaign, you really kind of got to do it for three months and up. And so, cause you know, cause you need to be there for long enough to really get the market to know you. And so, all right. So let's say that the boards in Dallas are like $8,000 cause it's Dallas and they it's all get a million Dallas. impressions weekly. Like they're, they're, they're expensive, but they're good boards, all of them. But if you do like the outer ring of that, like if you do billboards of the outer ring, but you do it for like three to six months, you could get like three times less the rate, but also target traffic traveling to Dallas. You can get traffic that goes from Dallas to other places. So um, one of the things we used to do in Lubbock, Lubbock was a circle kind of, Lubbock's like a big circle and they have like six roads coming in. The road, like the billboards in Lubbock would be a lot more expensive than the ones on the outskirts, but the outskirts would target everyone coming in because you'd have to go on that road. So like whenever mm. I, I just did a campaign for my yoga, I just did a campaign for my yoga studio and they are targeting traffic next to other yoga studios, but they have to go on that road to get it. So if you put a billboard that has to go to Dallas to get to Dallas, then you're going to get everyone going to Dallas. Like mm. you're going to get, like you could put something in downtown, but if they don't go downtown, they won't see it. So it could be a better option to just do something on the outskirts and get everybody coming in that disperses in Dallas. But does there you sense? go. Yeah, there, there, there's 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 a there's a pro tip. This episode's already stacked with pro tips. Um, Wes, if it's cool with you, I I, I love this that, that you do and uh, just want to share it with uh, the audience. If you don't yet follow Wes on LinkedIn or aren't connected with him, really encourage you to do that. Because you you come up with these, you make these brands up and then you create these awesome designs and you share them out. And I think that they're just such a, a great uh, representation of your work, but also yeah. really good um, perspective for a lot of the things that you're talking about here on this episode. Can you talk us through like, these are not real brands. These are, these are concoctions of your imagination. Right. The reason, the reason I'm creating my own brands and the reason I'm creating um, like these kind of advertisements is to show people what I kind of want to see because out of home is supposed to be kind of cool. And, um, and also I can put these up like that, that one right there is perfect. Like this that's one? something I, the, the, um, the perfume one, Got it. That's, that's something I completely made up, but like so if a fun. real brand wanted to do that, that has that type of product, I can do it. But right. this allows me to put something like that out there as a new designer, new business. Now that one's real. That Mendoza. This is cool. real. Yeah. That's, Listen, that's real you one. posted this the other day. It made me hungry. If you're not, if you're listening to this <laughs> on, the, on the audio version, again, just go connect with Wes and go through his post and save a bunch of time. But if you want to jump over to the, to the YouTube version, you can see uh, what, what we're looking at together here. This is, I mean, it looks delicious. Mendoza's authentic Mexican food. Um, in Nevada, this is, this is a killer, this is a killer design. Talk to us about this one. So this one, um, so they're, they're using a directional on a busy road that kind of needs to target traffic, like as a restaurant, taking people from a busy road to eat there. So what I did, they're on exit 105. So as you can see on the taco plate, they have that um, sauce in the middle. And so I kind of put that as the zero so that people would understand, oh, 105, you know, so that when they think of Mexican food, they think of Mendoza's. And it's just as they pass that, it's just really simple. The other thing is their logo is red. Um, and like they're, I wanted to use red because it makes you hungry. It grabs your attention. Um, the yellow kind of working. Some, the yellow kind of features some like fun, like, type of textures in there that kind of relate it. And then it's also very attention grabbing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, red, black, yellow, 
why is the vibe but the reason I did it this way is to like you know food who it is where you go that's it like I just I needed to come across quickly and back to your point about simple I mean that's it like here's the product here's here here's where to get off the highway like here's yeah. here's who to go get it from and here's how to go get there right. um in in three very simple steps on on a beautifully designed piece of outdoor that when does this go up this is going up in nevada we're gonna have to get some way like in a week um our, right. arbor got approved arbor got approved on thursday last week so i'd say about like ne- either this week or next week it should go up we're but recording this on march 29th so it's going up the first week of april this episode's probably being released like so. a week or two after that um yeah, so yeah. hopefully somebody in nevada can can find this for us uh, it looks delicious I, i've got to stop looking at it so now got, i'm just getting hungry <laughs> that one that one the dinosaur one's not mine but i like that That's talk, talk about like 3d talk about extensions like you know obviously there's there's a a cost to doing some of these embellishments but how yeah. impactful is it when you're able to do something like this again oh if you're gosh. listening to this um you know this one you might check out but this one's really cool it's for ripley's aquarium of the smokies uh it's dinosaurs there's a t-rex his face is like ripping through the billboard his teeth are big and like talk, talk about that talk about embellishments 3d extensions all, all that stuff how how important is it to think about things like that so if you ask most people that aren't billboard people like you know about the billboards that they know a lot of them are going to tell you well i really kind of like the ones that go off the top so mm. when you do i mean if when you do it it's it works and so like with this dinosaur you know what i would have done to get this effect is you could either get like a toy dinosaur or like a 3D one and you can turn it and most of that bottom part can actually be like the vinyl, but it just presents like that 3D effect on the vinyl. And then the top part of that um, Got it. usually built out of wood um, in the shop. And then um, you, they just kind of like print the vinyl and like match it up to there and put it up. Um, but yeah, you just, um, you measure that area, say how many square feet it is, make sure it's you know, within the restrictions of, you know, what it's supposed to be. And then you um, export the file. It looks like they actually have two. They've got the dinosaur with the metal up top by the eyeball. And then they've got that other one where the um, top of the um, metal peeling back is at the very top. So you would export both of those files right above. Uh, the top. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's super cool. And, and it's, you know, it's fun because these are things mm-hmm. that, um, you know, we all experience collectively at the same time, right? I see it yeah. at the same time that my son sees it as the car in the lane next to me <laughs> sees it. We're all experiencing this collectively. So as a brand, you have an opportunity to to entertain and to be thought provoking and to make people feel something. Um, yeah. You know, I had an interesting, uh, interesting conversation this morning about a campaign that got pulled off the road for some very aggressive copy, but, but the, the intent was there. Um, the intent was there. It was, uh, you know, very, very thought provoking. Can't talk about it here uh, live on the air, but you know, that that's it. Like take, take risks with the brand, you know, for, for maybe an established brand, a, 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 a local advertiser who's been around a family owned business for 150 years. And we're only, you know, we're perceived a certain way. Maybe I'm an attorney. Can attorneys can, you know, things that might not be Ripley's is fun, right? Dinosaurs are fun. Tacos are fun. Yeah. Law stuff isn't really fun. Uh, insurance can be fun, maybe. Um, but right, like there's some of these industries that aren't typically associated with a good time. How do you how do you approach how do you approach you know verticals like that? Well, um, okay, so with with those, um, you can either be very large with the text, like you know, a lot of a lot of injury attorneys that say like injured. Like I had one that had injured like across the whole board, and like you can't miss it at all and so like you know but that's like a regular one but you can you can do extensions for any brand i would believe you just kind of have to see like what about them is cool like there's there's one guy um that i had network with who does payment solutions and so basically what he does is he goes into restaurants and sells like the computer for like the payment solutions but like um forget the copy I, i haven't actually made it for him yet but Oh yeah, your POS system where you uh, point of sale. Yeah, and I wanted to say, is your POS a POS? And I so wanted, good. and I wanted to put the a POS system. The computer is an extension, right? Love he that. is a small business. 
but that like that's one that you can do and like you know if you have like a small snow cone factory that's just a mom and pop put the snow cone big you know they're they've got well that's also food but i mean um insurance people you know insurance people do claims for damage so when there's damage with life we have bandages we have like hurt things Mm. we have car wrecks we have glass we have broken glass um we have um people to do roofing like you can be a small you can be a handyman like a handyman could have a bunch of tools on his billboard doing stuff um you know they don't have to be a national advertiser to really go there um there's one there's one that's real funny on the way to dallas actually but it's uh it's a dentist it's a it's a small dentist brand and it's uh a big smile and one of the teeth is or the, it's a big smile and the buck teeth are missing and it says who left the gate open <laughs> <laughs> but i really i really that's like awesome. that it's awesome yeah that's fun yeah, you know yeah. and and i think that that's that is you know one of the superpowers of outdoor especially in a world where you know we digitally we we get so siloed i feel like you know i i, I, I got rid of youtube altogether because it felt like I'm just getting the same things suggested to me. It's the same people I listen to. It's the same content over and over and over. And outdoors is a great way to find new reach and introduce to people to things that they haven't thought about or, you know, that they've been digitally excluded from. And I think that that's, that's pretty, uh, that's a pretty important superpower that out of home has. So with that, I know that, you know, personal to you is, is initiative around, you know, helping the community. You're always so eager to give back and, and, and you do a lot of, work for nonprofits with your design work. Talk to me about, you know, wh- why is that important to you, West? Like, why, why is the nonprofit work so important? So, like, back back in 2020, like, back in 2020, right when COVID happened, like, right when um, George Floyd happened, like, everybody was arguing on Facebook bad. Like, it was COVID. We were closed. People weren't making money. So, like, we put a bunch of positive messages out, like, constantly, and as you drive by, it makes your day better. Like if you, mm. if, if, so we have 365 days and if you're passing positive messaging on many of those days, that actually is kind of cool to look at. I mean, it, that's the reason that where, if you just put like a, you know, choose happy, have a good day type of stuff, like it matters, like that yeah. works. And um, I mean, here's the thing, like digital billboards, um, they have either six or eight slots. They pay the same amount for their lease, whether they have so many sold or so many not. But if you have the space, use it for good. I would say um, I've been able to help countless PSAs, um, but the reason is because it raises awareness for that PSA. It raises awareness of the need, like, or that there's a solution out there for common problems. Like, you know, court, court, court for CASA, it was court appointed protective or something it was something sorry i don't remember what it stands no for. no no, no. It's, it sounds it's, like a mouthful it's court appointed people that help children in court when they have to go and like be in court and stuff right and like an them. like a child's advocate right so they but you don't think about that every day but if no. they were to put up a billboard to raise awareness it just lets people know that there's an option out there for people yeah um they're you know like save the rainforest type of stuff you know out of sight out of mind but, you know, if there were billboards that said stuff like that, you know, we would be more aware of like, hey, we should probably quit throwing our plastic in the ocean. You know, we should probably sure. do something about this. Um, there's there's funding, you know, there's funding for hunger. There's funding for homelessness. Um, you know, what is the overall need? You know, because like most people like, you know, like most people on average, you know, if they donate to a cause it's like 50 to 100. But businesses, when they get involved it's they donate more it's also like a tax benefit to them to have donate and help so raise awareness that it only costs two million dollars to feed every kid in denver and then denver's like really <laughs> we, we can do that and the next thing you know sure, like, that's a that's a that's a rounding error right but like when the when the community knows the actual need like it's it only takes two million to feed every kid in yeah let's schools. go then that's the that's what drives people to say yes we donated we donated and then they have enough for they need to feed the kids for the year but one of the other things is um there's a program and they do that for the school year but then you know in the summer like what happens like there's nothing there but so like what if there was a billboard that said hey school kids who can't eat lunch what about you know this option for you during the summer or you know get free lunches for kids you know every day in the summer like that would make a big difference in the lives yeah. of people. Um, because what, what you can know is, 
Um, some of the families that have a hard time move many places, so it's hard to target them by direct mail. It's hard to tell these people where their options are. And so like with an out of home campaign that raises that much awareness, it would let them know, hey, I can go to this place and I can feed my kid there. Like that's just the biggest thing. Um, it's huge. For and that. It might be li- you know limited access to to Wi-Fi or you know there might only be you know there, there may be no mobile device in the in, in the home or only only one and it's used for a dedicated purpose which is to communicate right so it's not being passed around like like it's you know it's sometimes it, you, know, you know we should be so fortunate but that's a reality like there that's that's real the, I, I saw something the other day um maybe it was a I, I don't want to say it was a Facebook ad but it, it was something it was something online and it was essentially to the effect of like if you're homeless and hungry like we can help. And I thought to myself, like, I'm, I'm, this is on my phone. Like, I can't imagine that, like, you're reaching a lot of the homeless population with your digital ad. But I, I would, bet yeah. you could reach a lot more of them with a billboard. Well, maybe, I bet a lot more people would be impacted if you, if you did something out of home. Yeah, many, many homeless people actually have phones. Like, a lot of them actually do have phones. But there's not all of them that do. So like one of the other things is that there's like out of home advertising isn't just billboards. Like it's also transit and it's also like public spaces. And um, there's a campaign that was done in Dallas for the Salvation Army that basically told people, you know, if you're hungry, go here. If you need clothes, go here. If you need job here, counseling, all of that. Like, but like reach the people where they are, you know, reach them where um, they are. That's, you know, reach them in public spaces where, you know, yeah. Like I think are. that's it. That's, that's, that's the hot take. That's the, that's the exclamation point, reach them where they are. Uh, Wes, if, if folks want to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more about what you do or how to work with you, what's the Latin long, how, how do they get in touch? Um, if they need their billboard designed or just anything, they can email me at Wes at billboarddesign.com or they can just come. Um, yeah. Yeah, they, they can email me there or go to my website, westbrickdesign.com or billboarddesign.com. And then I have other stuff there that you can do. Awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure to link uh, link to all that stuff. I know that we covered a lot. Is there anything that, that we missed along the way? Should we do a part two? Uh, 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 how, how do we do? I'd be down to do, I'd be down to do a part two. Um, but Let's I think do a part yeah, two. Today, today we covered quite a bit. But I mean, I have a whole lot more to tell you, but that would be a whole nother like nine hours so well deal deal so there it is we're, we're going to put part two on the books right after this uh wes i can't thank you enough for being here and just all the insight that that you shared today it's great to meet with you today and thank you for letting me be on absolutely well you'll be back you'll be coming back and we're going to get that locked in right after this but if you found this to be helpful please share it with somebody else who could benefit as always make sure to smash that subscribe button down there in the corner if you're listening to this on audio, please throw a follow wherever you're listening to the podcast, and we'll see y'all next time. Quarter century, I finally came to my senses. I finally got my hand up on the tinted Benz kid. I see the world clear through my tinted lenses. With the dream and the drive, the possibilities endless. Now print that, send this all the way to Tokyo. Take a trip down south, down to Mexico. Next stop, Shanghai, the world class trade show. First class all the way, cause that's how we roll. Yeah, call us the rock star business, man. Rockin' shows we handle business, man. We got our own future in the palm of our hands, cause divided.